So here I'd like to practice determining whether series converge or diverge. I'll do seven examples of whether or not series converge or diverge and talk about my thought process throughout. Okay, first one. The sum of 1 over 2 plus sine n. All of these sums will go from n equals 0 to infinity. When I look at this one, the first thing I'm thinking is, do the terms actually get smaller? If the terms don't get smaller and smaller, it has no chance of converging. These don't. These don't. The terms themselves don't get smaller. Uh, they're always bigger than or equal to 1. So this definitely diverges. The terms don't go to 0. So it diverges. That one was an easy one. Okay, number two. The sum n going from 0 to infinity, n factorial squared over 2n factorial. Now, when I see factorials in the problem, the first thing I think is ratio test. Because when you do the ratio test and you do the ratio, factorials simplify nicely. So let's try the ratio test. Now when I do the ratio test, I look at this limit. I do the n plus first term over the nth term. I don't need absolute values for this problem. Every term is positive. So the n plus 1 term would be n plus 1 factorial squared over, now I'm going to plug in n plus 1 for n. So I think the bottom becomes 2n plus 2 factorial. I've seen mistakes made in this step in the past. I'm replacing n with n plus 1 in parentheses. So I get 2n plus 2. That is the n plus 1 term, and then I'm going to divide by the nth term. So when you divide a fraction, you flip and multiply. So I will multiply by n factorial squared on the bottom and 2n factorial on the top. Okay. So what I was saying about the ratio test interacting nicely with factorials is that the factorial here is 1 times 2 up to n plus 1. So that's n plus 1 factorial. I've got squared. And then I'm going to divide by, I'm going to divide by n factorial squared. So 1 times 2 up to n squared. All of the bottom will cancel with everything except for the n plus 1 term on top. As for the 2n factorials, on top I have 1 times 2 up to 2n. And on the bottom, I have 2n plus 2 factorial. So I have 1 plus times 2 times all the way up to 2n. Then I have two extra terms, 2n plus 1 and 2n plus 2. All the top of this factorial cancels with all but the last two terms on the bottom. So what I'm left with is n plus 1 squared on top. And on the bottom, I have 2n plus 1 times 2n plus 2. So the coefficient of n on the top, excuse me, the coefficient of n squared on the top is 1. So on top, you know, I have n squared plus 2n plus 1. And if I expanded the bottom, the coefficient of n squared would be 4, 2 times 2. So this is a polynomial function. The highest power of n is 2. On the bottom, I have a polynomial function. The highest power of n is 2. So the limit is actually 1 over 4. One fourth. So I was doing the ratio test. I did this limit. 
I got one fourth. That means the series converges. Converges. Okay, on to problem number three. Here I have the sum n squared minus 1 over n cubed plus 1. When I look at this, I'm thinking on top, n squared is what really matters. The minus 1 doesn't affect much. And on bottom, the n cubed is important, the plus 1 insignificant. So this kind of looks like n squared over n to the cubed, ignoring the plus and minus 1s. That means maybe I, I should use a comparison test. I'll try the limit comparison test. So I'm going to compare with the sum over n going from 0 to infinity, n squared over n cubed. This, by the way, is a p-series. The n squared cancels with everything except an n on bottom. And this is a divergent harmonic series. So to do the limit comparison test, I'm going to take the limit as n goes to infinity of these terms divided by these terms. So I'm going to take n squared minus 1 over n cubed plus 1, and I'm going to divide by n squared over n cubed. So when you simplify this a little bit, you get the limit as n goes to infinity. On top I have n squared minus 1, and I'm going to divide that by n squared. And then I'm going to multiply by n cubed over n cubed plus 1. When you do this limit, the limit of this term is 1, and the limit of this term is 1. So the limit is 1. That's okay in the limit comparison test. The limit being 1 actually gives me great information. It says that both series do the same thing. Now since this was a harmonic series that was divergent, both series are divergent. So remember in the limit comparison test, you just need this limit to not be 0 and not be infinity, and then both terms or both sums do the same thing. Okay, let's move on to the fourth one. Here I have here I have this sum. And if I'm thinking about it in the same way I thought about number 3, the n squared on top is more important than the plus 1. The plus 1 basically can be ignored. And on bottom I have 5 to the n. I also am thinking that powers like 5 to the n are vastly more powerful than exponents like n squared. So n squared is nothing in comparison to 5 to the n power. 5 to the n power is so much more powerful than n squared. So again, you could do a limit comparison test. You could even do the ratio test. I think the ratio test would work great for this one. But I think I'm going to do the direct comparison test and, and do this problem kind of in a, a surprising way. I'm going to say this is less than the sum n going from 0 to infinity. I'm going to keep the 5 to the n the same on the bottom, but I'm going to replace the n squared plus 1 by, let's say, 3 to the n power. What I'm thinking there is 3 to the n power is always going to be bigger than n squared plus 1. So I'm going to use the direct comparison test and just directly compare it to a bigger series. Now this series is the sum 3 fifths to the n. That's a geometric series and that the power is 3 fifths to the n. That's convergent. So I compared my series, I got bigger, to a convergent geometric series. That means my smaller series also had to converge. Now this is how I thought of it, but again, you could use the ratio test and it would work out just fine for problem four. Okay, let's do problem five. 
That's the sum n to the 3n power over n plus 1 to the 2n power. This one's set up perfectly for the root test. So let's do the root test. The root test says take a limit as n goes to infinity of the nth root of the terms. So I'm going to do n to the 3n power over n plus 1 to the 2n power. And I'm going to raise all that to the 1 over n power. So this is the limit as n goes to infinity. The exponents simplify. I get n cubed on top, and I get n plus 1 squared on bottom. This has limit infinity. I have a third power on top and only a second power on bottom. Infinity is bigger than one, so this diverges. The root test tells me diverges. Okay, two more. Let's do this one, the sum n squared 3 to the n over n factorial. Now again, you can do the ratio test on this one. It has a factorial. Ratio test will work out perfectly, but I'm going to do it a slightly more sophisticated way. I'm going to do the direct comparison test. I'm going to do the same trick I did in problem four. I'm going to replace the n squared or the n squared plus one with a power like 3 to the n. Why don't I do 3 to the n again? So this is the sum, n going from 0 to infinity. And I'm going to replace the n squared with 3 to the n, getting bigger. So I have 3 to the n times 3 to the n over n factorial. That's the sum of 9 to the n over n factorial. This converges because I know actually what it is. This is e to the 9. Remember, that's the series expansion for e to the x. You know, x to the n over n factorial, that's the Taylor series for e to the x, which has radius of convergence infinity. So using our prior knowledge, that's actually equal to e to the 9. e to the 9 is a finite number. That means this original sum had to be a finite number as well. So this converges. And lastly, I saved the easiest one, my favorite for last. This is an alternating series. Alternating series, all you have to check, do the terms actually get smaller? Yes, as n increases, these terms get smaller. So this is an alternating series. that converges. Okay, great.